Good afternoon from London. It's a bit of a dull grey February afternoon here. And hello from me, Dr Dermot Hudson, the chairman of the British Group for the study of the Duccio Deer, chairman of the Korean Friendship Association of the UK, an official delegate of the KFA for the UK, and president of the Association for the Study of Songum Politics of the UK. Now, it might be a dull day here in London, but in people's Korea, it is the day of the shining star. The uh, anniversary, in this case, the 80th anniversary of the birth of the great leader, comrade Kim Jong-il, which is celebrated by the Korean people and world progressives, including Ju Chadi and Sungha, my dear followers, as the day of the shining star. I'd like to extend greetings to all subscribers to the Sungham 007 YouTube channel and to the members of the British Group for the study of the Duke idea, members of uh, uh, KFA UK and members of the Association for the Study of Sungham Politics of the UK and also to KFA members throughout the world and all uh, supporters of the channel throughout the world and all true supporters of people's career on the occasion of the Day of the Shining Star. Uh, now, before I speak about uh, the uh, revolutionary activities of uh, the great leader, comrade uh, Kim Jong-il, uh, and his life. Um, I'd just like to share uh, my own personal recollection of uh, when I actually saw the great leader, comrade Kim Jong-il. It was April 2002. I was 40 years old at the time. I travelled to the DPRK as the delegate to the Korean French Association with the UK. We'd just been formed one year before and also of the old uh, Society for Friendship with Korea, which uh, no longer exists. And I'd gone to participate in the celebrations of the 90th anniversary of the birth of the great leader, President Kim Il-sung, the Day of the Sun. My guide was a lady from the DPRK uh, Committee for Cultural Relations with Foreign Countries, Mrs. Pak Song Ok. The atmosphere in the DPRK was great. There was a real festive mood. To me, it seemed almost like Christmas. Visiting the DPRK on that occasion, I saw uh, it was all lies what the imperialist media said about the DPRK. There was absolutely no famine or starvation. and In fact, I remember seeing kids on street corners eating ice creams and thinking, you know, what a load of rubbish the Western media talk about people's career. I was invited to uh, attend uh, the national meeting for the national uh, for the 90th uh, anniversary of the birth of the great leader, Comrade Kimball Sung. I was given an invitation uh, card uh, and uh, went to the uh, national meeting uh, which was a grand event it was held at the people's palace of culture which you know some of you uh, watching may know uh, the stadium was packed we took our seats i could see the main uh, platform uh, suddenly they played the welcome music and chairman kim jong-il appeared on the stage uh, leading uh, the party and government officials uh, to their seats. Uh, and Mrs. Peck exclaimed at the top of her voice, which became highly pitched, leader Kim Jong-il. Uh, at the time, Chairman Kim Jong-il was 60, but he didn't look like it. Uh, he looked like a much younger man. He marched fast and had a straight back. Everyone cheered and cheered. There were shouts of Manse, and these resounded through the air. The applause and cheering went on for more than five minutes. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. It was absolutely electric, and it was absolutely amazing to be part of the experience. Uh, it demonstrated uh, how 
the people were united around comrade Kim Jong-il and the great workers party of Korea. We celebrate the birth anniversary of comrade Kim Jong-il because uh, he was a true people's leader and a defender of socialism. The great leader, comrade Kim Jong-il, was born the son of Grillas on February 16th, 1942. Our delegation uh, in visited his birthplace uh, at Mount Pakdu in August 2017. Comrade Kim Jong-il did not come from a privileged background, but his family were poor but honest peasants. However, at the same time, they had taken up the fight for independence. They fought for the liberation of Korea from Japanese rule with arms in their hands. Comrade Kim Jong-il was brought up in clothes made from old uniforms and spent his childhood in a simple log cabin. He witnessed the severe anti-Japanese war and later, as a young boy, also witnessed the Fatherland Liberation War against the US imperialist aggressors, which not only saw the atrocities and devastation brought by the US imperialists, but also their defeat. Comrade Kim Jong-il lived a very simple and humble life. As a student, he participated in the construction of Pyongyang. He also worked at Pyongyang Textile Machinery Factory at Lave No. 26. Thus, Comrade Kim Jong-il was a true people's leader, always with the people, sharing both hardship and joy with them. Often, Comrade Kim Jong-il did not celebrate his own birthday. During his lifetime, no statue of Comrade Kim Jong-il was built. He took simple meals of um, rice balls in his car. He uh, visited uh, 1,290 units across the country, travelling more than 600,000 kilometres, which is about 17 times as long as the circumference of the earth. Comrade Kim Jong-il was always dressed in an ordinary parka. Respected Marshal Kim Jong-un wrote, the only parka he wore from the days of the arduous march, the last days of his life, is vivid evidence showing what a thorny path he had to traverse with patriotic devotion to defend his socialist country. One year, looking back on the trying... Uh, Days of the trying ordeals with deep emotion, he touched on the parka he was wearing. He said he wore it at the onset of the arduous march after President Kim Il-sung had passed away and he kept wearing it because he could not forget the trials. He continued earnestly that the parka was symbolic of the Songun-based revolution. Even if a parka gets thin, uh, f- one wears it long and one cannot keep warm in the cold though icy wind got through the old parker he burned his heart with a sense of responsibility for the defense of the his country he held on to the parker for more than 10 years when he displayed strong will and superhuman energy going on with his inspection of military units on the front line to train the soldiers into a match for 100 combatants end of quote at the beginning of the 1960s, Comrade Kim Jong-il, on the 15th of August 1960, gave guidance to the historic Seoul Ru kyung Su 105th Tank Division of the Korean People's Army. In June 1964, he started work at the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea. As well as practical day-to-day leadership, he developed the ideology and theory of the Workers' Party of Korea. He systematised the Duce idea and created Kim il Sungism. Because of his skills as a theoretician and an ideologist, plus his modest style as a people's leader, he became acclaimed as the successor to the great leader President Kim il Sung and was also known as the Dear Leader. Comrade Kim Jong il work, wrote works on many subjects, not just politics or theory. He is best remembered for the work on the Duce idea, which will see the 40th anniversary of its publication this coming March. Comrade Kim Jong-il 
produced massive and very substantial works such as On the Art of the Cinema, On and On Duce Literature, which I'm actually reading at the moment. Comrade Kim Jong-il steered the DPRK through the difficult period of the Yardist March of the 1990s. In those days, the DPRK faced the triple challenges of sanctions and blockades by the imperialists, the disappearance of the world socialist market, which some said was a form of double blockade and several years of consecutive natural disasters. Many countries would have gone under, in fact they would have gone under many times, but not the DPRK. Even though the DPRK faced extreme difficulties, Comrade Kim Jong-il made sure that a high level of social benefits was maintained. Vans with soya milk for children were always seen on the streets of the DPRK in this period. The ideas of the great leader Comrade Kim Il-sung on national reunification were thoroughly applied and developed in depth by Comrade Kim Jong-il. He made a decisive breakthrough in the struggle for national reunification by having the June 15th uh, Joint Declaration signed with the then South Korean Chief Executive Kim Dae-young. In the 1990s, the US imperialists and other Western countries contacted the DPRK through secret backdoor diplomatic channels, offering aid if the DPRK gave up socialism and went in for reform and opening up like a certain neighbouring country. But comrade Kim Jong-il instead declared, expect no change from me. These words were very meaningful indeed, as they symbolised both continuity in the revolution as well as the militant defence of Duce-based socialism. Comrade Kim Jong-il saw through the tricks of the imperialists and combated their pressure and their machinations. He made sure that the DPRK continued firmly along the road of Duce that had been charted by Comrade Kim Il-sung and upheld the banner of Duce, which now was supplemented with the Songham idea and Songham politics. Songham politics is the treasured sword for defending in independence. It was thanks to Comrade Kim Jong Il that the DPRK upheld socialism and did not succumb to the uh, torrent of capitalist restoration that had swept the socialist camp in the late 80s and the early 1990s. The DPRK became a true socialist fortress, an example, a beacon for those aspiring towards socialism. Today, the DPRK is the world's most independent country. It is seen as a country that does not take any nonsense from the imperialists or big powers. This is the legacy given to us by Comrade Kim Jong-il, a legacy that is today further developed and carried forward by the dear respected leader, Marshal Kim Jong-un the one and only success, successor to the Duce cause. Let us join with the Korean people and world progressive people in celebrating the Day of the Shining Star, the 80th anniversary of the birth of the great leader, Comrade Kim Jong-il. Now, I say um, thank you uh, very much for listening to that. And I think the... Uh, most meaningful thing we can do uh, to uphold the memory of uh, the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il and uh, you know celebrate the uh, day of the shining star is to further increase our solidarity with people's career and do more uh, to uh, spread the Duce idea throughout the world and to study the Duce idea uh, more deeply uh, we've got a few more activities coming up. Uh, on the 24th of February, I will be speaking in Liverpool, the city of the uh, Fab Four, etc. Uh, we'll be speaking on the need to defend people's career. So I say please look out for that on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, we will also be having the KFA UK Literary 
uh, and Poetry Evening on the 26th of uh, Fe uh, February. That's an online event via Skype. And we will be planning a few more activities for April. And we're also going to uh, be at some point, uh, probably uh, late spring, early summer, uh, we'd be doing a picket, uh, possibly of the uh, dread, uh, dreaded uh, British Brainwashing Corporation. Anyway, um, I'd like to thank subscribers for their continued support. Uh, we're nearly up to 1,500 subscribers. Uh, so please, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please uh, subscribe uh, to the channel and also please take a look at our publications uh, spotlight on lulu.com i'll put it in the description and it's not just my uh books it's uh, books by other um kfa uk and british group for the study of the duce idea people but if you want to buy my books i would strongly recommend my latest book the great conspiracy against people's career and also in defense of duce Korea and uh, the famine uh, that never was. Um, anyway, I say um, please uh, have a great day, enjoy the day of the shining star, celebrate it in whichever way you can, and see you at uh, an event, either real life or online, and see you again on the video channel. Goodbye now. <laughs>